Hi everyone, Lisa Gifford here and Linda Winter. Hi. And welcome to our Creating with Martelli. This is our Holiday Stuffies Part 1. Part 1. Yep. We're going to focus on fall. As you can see behind us, in front of us, this is going to be Halloween, Thanksgiving, autumn, so lots of orange, but we'll have a few other colors too. <laughs> We're going to start with the show and tell, and then Lisa's going to be making uh, one of our new templates, the froggy. He's officially the frog template. Yep. And I think he's It comes in two sizes. So. There's a large one and a small one. So we'll get to that in a minute. So what are some of the things that we think of when we're thinking about fall stuffies and holiday stuffies? Well, if you've seen Martelli templates, one of our, well, one of my absolute favorites Thank is you. our pumpkin, <laughs> our stuffed pumpkin. We also have a pumpkin set that's an applique, but today we're doing the stuffy. So here is the, the, the stuffed pumpkin template set. It comes in three different sizes and I actually have all three of them here. And who says a pumpkin has to be orange you can make them white i thought this was very pretty for uh, around the christmas time to have this one setting uh on your mantle or on your table so so here's a, this is made with a large template and it's really easy to do um i'm going to pull it out because i don't see i thought i had written instructions on here but i just wanted you to see it's it, it's just three pieces but it's just cutting out these blades you're not putting anything on the fold. You could do it all in a single color. It could be really scrappy if you wanted it to be. But this is the large. So you're basically cutting out sets. So there's one, two, three, four, five sets that you're cutting out with this. And then you're just sewing them together, leaving it an opening, and then stuffing it. And then there's always like a little hole that's up on top so that you can... Um, before you put your stuffing in there, you can make your little stem, you could use cork, you could use a twig, you can whatever you want for your stem. And then I just had some Spanish moss, some raffia, some little, um, some leaves, whatever, whatnot that you could fill it up with. And then I just, I sewed a little button on the bottom so it kind of would brought it up a little bit. And I thought it was really interesting that it didn't matter how I did these, they always turned out looking a little bit different and maybe it has something to do with the straighter grain or how I cut it and then you stuffed it they always gave it a little bit of a different look so and when we did a lot video of on this we mm -hmm. also used a couple different polyfills so mm -hmm. there are different fillings that you can use and the filling will make a difference too because some of them kind of flatten out and some of them really puff yeah out this one too, here so. is the polyfill this one here is the Martelli fiber fill so it's a little bit more more dense but they were just a lot of fun. They go together rather quickly. So this is the large and it's just a single template. And then this one here is the medium and it makes this size right here. Perfect, perfect little size. And same way I just decorated with some raffia, some Spanish moss and just had, had fun hot gluing all of that stuff yeah, that's in there. I was going to say there. a glue gun will be your best friend in a project mm -hmm. like this at the top. And then go to your closet where you have all of the, you know, fall and autumn stuff, all those leaves that they kind of got burned from the sun. If they sat outside last year, you'll still have some leaves that'll be perfect. You can go raid your trees if you want to. But all of those goodies that you can put on top, your ribbons, yeah. your raffia, all those things have lots of fun. Martelli even mm -hmm. has a really nice um, fall, um, our, tem our the templates, tracing the template. tracing templates, yeah. which would be very beautiful to use those tracing templates to make your own leaves on it. This yeah. one right here was a poinsettia that had seen better days. <laughs> so I had actually just tore it apart and just pulled out the leaves and just, you know, made this with it. So whatever you have that, that use. Yeah. And again, here is this, and then here's the small, but it made this. Look how cute. And that's just, it's just darling. Yeah. It's so easy, easy, easy to do. These are great gifts, but they're great to put around your house. And if you guys mm -hmm. watch the So Much Therapy with our favorite person, sorry, our favorite person, Alta Graham, <laughs> she showed how to use a soldering iron to cut out. When you have a synthetic fabric, if you have a piece of glass or a tile or something as your base, doing those poinsettia leaves that there, would be instead easy. of taking a poinsettia, you can get some of that synthetic fabric and cut around. You can use a tracing template 
sample it if you want to, but basically cut around with that soldering iron. Mm -hmm. For any of you that are crafty, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, go back and watch Alta's video on so much therapy. She used a tin uh, can, so a soda can, and cut out the pattern, and you can do that. But we have a tracing template for the leaves, mm -hmm. so I think that would be perfect. So let me take right. a step back. I forgot to do this. I got Valerie here. She's oh, yeah. actually <laughs> moderating us. So Valerie, how are we doing out there? We got a got a few people watching yep, us today. We have some oldies but goodies we love. Miss <laughs> Kaufman. Yes. We have Miss Brantley, Miss Tooth McCoy, and there's just so many. Verna's back with us. Oh, Betty, perfect. and she's um, my aunt sister. So we'd like to say hello to her. Um, give her a shout out. And um, we have uh, Rob Riddle and uh, oh, Becky McNeilis. We love her. Just chatted with her a minute before the live. So we've got a lot on here. Looking forward to watching. Lots of pumpkins. We have we uh, went pumpkin crazy in here. We got pumpkins exactly. ev everywhere. Yeah. So let's pull out. You want to talk about this one? Yeah, I, All right, I you think do this that. is such a great thing. Those of you that took the retreat that we had, you saw Lisa do this in one of the pregame activities. So this is the blossom. And this blossom was done with the five inch square. So for anybody that bought our table, you've got a four and a half, a five and a half. You may not have the five. The five inch is a charm, but that's what makes each of these each of these and each of these. Yeah, there's there's five. three different <laughs> three different colors of fabric, mm -hmm. or three different fabrics here, five inches. Well, this one, let me talk about this one for a second because I wanted it to have that sunflower yeah. look. So here is my five inch squares and there's five of them here, but I took a little two inch square, I believe right here, or maybe it might've been a one and a half inch and I just covered the corner with the brown because I wanted to have that sunflower look in the middle. So I did a covered corner right here. So as I sewed them all together, it had that petal look Thank to you. it. And then the, the, you know, the side of a sunflower, and then I'm thinking the very back of a sunflower. So that's what this was all about. Again, it's just taking the, the, little, the squares, add the cover corner, and then just sewing it together. And it's really easy, and there's a lot of videos that's out there on making these. Again, we're thinking about doing a video too so that you can actually see it. But this one was made with five inch squares. But if you really want to get you know, ambitious and you really have a lot of polyfill or stuffing, then you can make something like this. <laughs> this is made with the 10 inch squares and this is the home deck or the, um, what is this fabric? The yeah, home deck. Yeah, home outdoor deck, fabric. the outdoor fabric that I got. And again, 10 inch squares, Five inch squares. I've even made them as small as three and a half. But just easy, decoration. easy, easy. Yeah, yeah, easy, easy, easy. And you can make this whatever colors again that you want. So, and those little bean bag balls that they're selling now, you can oh, put yeah. those inside too, and that would make it really cushy and soft. And you definitely you know, want to of, sew that up so it don't get everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> add a, pol a polar fleece, or I don't think I would do minky, but you could on a serger maybe do minky. Just make stretchy. sure you're doing a yeah, yeah. You know, just secure it really well, especially this if you're using the balls. half inch seam allowance. I wanted yeah. it to be a bigger than just a quarter. This is a half inch seam allowance because I'm dealing with something that would probably take a little bit more wear and tear. Yeah. And All again, right. for those of you that that took our retreat you already saw how to make this so at some point we will do a video on creating this and Lisa has a variation on this theme so when you're piecing these together you're sewing a little bit differently and it's a really cool one too so all right so we talked about wearing pink earlier in the day because of breast cancer awareness so we wanted to talk about a template or two or three that we have that honors breast cancer and it doesn't have to be breast cancer as you can see this rainbow i think is for autism and there's yeah. a chart yeah. out there that you can look at purple for this blue for that pink for that that'll tell you what the rip ribbon represents but this big template right here is this or this big pillow was created with this template and if you look we're basically folding so this here lisa are you going to model this for us <laughs> <laughs> it has, it's something like this. Yeah. So it's a post-surgical comfort pillow. So it doesn't have to be for breast cancer. It could be for whatever surgery that you're having done here on the front and you want to protect yourself. But we also have one, and it's actually, you can see it on this photo right here, and I actually have it right here, that if you have a port, it would be easy to just to increase one right. side up and have it where the other side would be down so you could have that port you could have where your uh, seat belt is protecting you so we got lots of different ways that you can work with this template to come up with these different designs and wasn't this a customer request yes i can't remember who it was that requested it but i believe it was our our um 
what was the lady who made who created this? I don't remember. She I moved was, away. I was at trade shows yeah, while yeah. all this was going on. This so. was actually Stephanie had worked on a pillow with a customer, and they had done two or three to find out the most comfortable. But yeah. for chest, um, open chest surgery, there was a lot. This isn't yeah. just one. Yeah. Um, yeah and definitely. somebody did say the um, puzzle piece is the autism. The yeah. purple color, though, isn't it? Uh, rainbow is. I think the rainbow color, the fabric. Yeah, when I that when, shows you pink for breast cancer. Um, yeah, I, I was actually I mean, when I did this, I was thinking uh, all there's so, all yeah. different many colors because yeah. all the ribbons can be a different thing. So if we actually have the ribbon template, which makes it so easy to m m make these. So here it is with the pink and the and black. And the pink is a really good one to show mm -hmm. you that this black right here, that is your background. That's and this we have a template, template right here. So that one you're going to piece first. And then that ribbon, when you're cutting this and cutting that, you're going to either Just do right around. sides together or wrong sides together. So it'll give you this angle and this angle. So you get those two pieces. They're mirrored, basically. Mm -hmm. So yeah. now are we going to mention the giveaway that we're giving away? Yeah, yeah. We are having a giveaway today, so but we got uh, permission We've, from Val what we could do for the giveaway today, and it's going to be ahead. this this template. So this template again can be used for all kinds of um, ailments, any kind of healing. When I had uh, surgery years and years ago and had my appendix and my gallbladder out, and I had a big scar back in the day they made a pillow for me before I left the hospital. Mm -hmm. And boy, that pillow came in really handy. So for anybody that's had any kind of surgery on the front of their body, this really is valuable. So, so we're gonna do this at the we, end of our show, right? And we've already drawn the name. How do you get, get to enter into our giveaway for the next time? When we're doing a creating with Martelli, we want you to like, comment, share, tag your friends, at least three names, and we're gonna draw one name from somebody that has shared or tagged, and we'll announce that person in our next um, creating with Martelli. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, so we're going to be giving that away later on today. Yeah, okay, so today. I'm going to talk kitties. You ready to talk kitties? <laughs> All right, yeah. let me pull some up. I got some right here. All right, so I have five kitties thanks to Philip, and Lisa <laughs> made this adorable kitty template. So what is this for? This is full of rice, corn, beans, whatever, but it goes around your neck. You can mm -hmm. put this in the microwave, you can put this in the freezer. You made one here yep. with the zipper, so yep. I can take this out and stick that in the microwave, stick that in the freezer, and then it goes right inside of here with the zipper. Do not put the zipper, if you do a zipper, do not put that in the microwave. 100% cotton fabric, 100% cotton thread. Whoops, our microphones. So do not <laughs> Sorry, do think. anything <laughs> that is polyester or acrylic or mm -hmm. you know any fabric that has metallic in it because those things in a microwave will spark and I do not want you coming and running and complaining because 100% cotton fabric, 100% yeah. cotton thread, not even mercerized cotton thread will work. It needs to be cotton thread. Now these so, are filled with, I believe, rice, but they don't have to be filled with something. You could just put polyfill in yeah, here. They could yeah, be whatever, absolutely. just a nice little comfortable Yeah, comfy if you want to travel with this and wear it around your neck on the Careful plane. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> if you want to travel on the plane, if you want to travel in the car, then a nice kind of a soft, you know, plushy kind of stuffing would be great. But these stuffed the way they are stuffed now are, again, terrific for your microwave or for your freezer. And in the summertime or for anybody that has sinus headaches or the back aches, neck aches, in the freezer is really nice. And I actually designed this in the middle of summer when it was really super hot. And so we were getting them and putting them in the freezer and they were just nice and cooling to have on your neck when you were walking. But oh, yeah. So just, just really nice. And you can embellish all you want. You can make this look like your own little kitty cat with the whiskers and the colors and all of that. So this is Cole. Uh, my black cat, this is Sylvester, <laughs> monkey, cinnamon. Uh, this is actually uh, cinnamon. So anyway, the idea of this is have fun with it. You yep. know, it's kitties. For those of you that love kitties or if you've got kids around, this is a really fun stuffy to do as well. Speaking of stuffies, you so those. owls, you know, it's Halloween. So this is Halloween fabric. And this is Janet Platt's, um, the flying geese one, I mean, not flying geese, the continuous uh, prairie points. So if you don't know about her stuff, it's really cool too. She called me this morning even. So this is one row of prairie points, which is a whole lot of fun to do. This was made with my burp pad, but we have the, um, thank you. We have these guys here. So our bony pillow templates will work 
almost the same. You can see this is a little bit narrower at the top right here than this is. And I just drew out a little template to do his ears. And I have wings and feet that you can add to them. Embellish as much as you want. These are a whole lot of fun to make and to give away. Bless you. So make it in whatever size you want. We have the small, we have the um, large, and we have the extra large. Could you imagine making an extra large owl? That would be I mean, so cute. I mean, I would do glow-in-the-dark <laughs> fabric, glow-in-the-dark eyes. Yeah. How cool I'd would have that big, be? I'd put big sunflowers for the eyes. <laughs> oh, that, yeah. that would be so cool. Yeah, and the flowers, I have flowers there. And in my directions, I've got a video that shows you how to make this. The flowers are not for babies. They're not for little kids that are going to put things in their mouth. Mm -hmm. So remember, whatever it is you're doing when you embellish on any of the stuffies that we're showing you, think about whether little kids are going to be around it. If they're at that age where they're putting things in their mouth, yeah. you want to make sure to not stuff where things can be pulled out. Like this. This is the little bat. This was done from my um, baby bib template. But again, you could use this template and just scoop out right up here to make him. And the wings, I just printed out wings from the internet that I found and I resized them to make it fit this little bat and this is just a heavier um, piece of like a felt kind of a fabric, a wool fabric and this is embroidered. You don't have to do embroidery but I don't have to worry about babies with sticking in the mouth. If you don't have an embroidery machine then you've got felt that you can use. You can even use the glue, glow in the dark glue. There's glue. I had a couple kids that came over and we made some of these and they did glow in the dark where they oh, drew cool. on and that was a whole lot of fun That's too. Cute. So those are always fun stuffies as well. So we did pumpkins earlier, but I want to show you a couple pumpkins that I did. And there's um, okay. one up front there too. So here. pumpkins, I love using things that I already have at home, spools. So you've got spools of thread that don't look like this. This is one of those that you buy and you can stain it, but you may have one before it's stained, the old fashioned ones and stain it. But look how cute that is. And this was just a rectangle. This was a rectangle, this was a rectangle, this was a rectangle. So you can use spools. You you can use corks. There's a lot of different options there and you're just coming up on those sides there. But this one, I made this one this morning and this one's a little bit different. I don't know if you can see there's one piece of fabric, there's another piece of fabric, there's another piece of fabric, and there's another piece of fabric. Four yeah. pieces of fabric for the front, four pieces of fabric for the back. Can you figure out what I used to make that? Lisa, you're not saying anything. I don't know what you used. Did you use squares? Oh my goodness. Yeah, so I cut four circles for the top. I cut four circles for the bottom. And imagine I had a circle out of one fabric, another, 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 and you stitch together, you stitch together, you stitch those so now together. You That's did the front. Quarter circles. Yeah, quarter okay, circles. Gotcha. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly this template. You're not folding your fabric at all. That is and awesome. that turns into the front, that turns into the or the top, and that turns into the bottom. And you can see on the sides. Ooh, it looks there. like my petty pants so, squash. Yeah. I mean it's <laughs> kind of what I want to do is seriously, because I always have a hard time finding needles that I've thrown. It. I have a hard time threading needles, so I want to make a pin cushion that is already full of needles mm -hmm. in colors of floss, embroidery floss of thread that are already threaded and ready to go. This I just stuffed with polyfill, but grab those others, these guys here. Okay. These are not circles, but can you feel the difference between those two? Well, there's a needle in there. Oh, so, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so this one's kind of, what you got in this one? Okay, so inside of here, yeah, don't don't, don't get squeeze on those too pins. hard. <laughs> so here it's really crunchy, right? Yeah, it's crunchy. Is that so, walnuts? So this is it what? Walnuts? No, Walnut shells? no. This I love doing things like this. You go to your kitchen, not the old ones, not the used ones, but the new ones, the wool scrubbies. Oh so, my goodness! Yeah. So why do I do that? Because supposedly it keeps your pen sharper. And yes. if you have <laughs> poor Lisa, <laughs> and if you notice, these are quilt as you go um, Those from are scraps. So, cute. so I had made projects out of all these fabrics. This is one of our fabrics in the bundle. That's a fabric in the bundle. Um, this one this is. is a fabric in the bundle. I've got a couple of the fabrics in the bundle, so there are different ones there. But these are all done out of scraps, and you can do whatever you want on the back. But quilt as you go. I added just a little ribbon, just a little ribbon. If you want to have this dangling from your sewing machine or dangling from whatever it is, your sewing machine case, whatever it is. The other thing, too, when you do something like this as quilt as you go, you could do all of your sharp 
pins that you use for whatever project and then all those other special um, pins that you use for another. So, or if you're doing your needles from your sewing machine, you can say, these are going to be all of my sharps. These are going to be all of my universals. These are going to be all of mine used for. Oh yeah, you can divide it out. Yeah, so mm -hmm. you can divide that out if you want to, but it's just out of scrap. So these were rectangles done with the Martelli rectangles. So super fast, super easy to do as well. So just pin cushions. So do you know what this is no, for? No, no, no. So this little guy, this was done with the five inch. You can see how much it shrunk up, but I've got beans in here. You can put rice, you can put deer corn. That's my favorite thing to do in the microwave. And then you stick this in your pocket and when you're sitting somewhere outside where you're cold, you just keep it in your hands. Oh, how nice. So this, and this was just um, polar fleece that I had that had the little spider. But I like having these where you can heat these up and just keep them around. If you're sitting somewhere and it's cold, you know, having this is a nice thing to be able to have. All right, stuffies. We're talking about stuffing with Kleenex. So you've got things like this. This is super fast and easy to do, too. And that's a great one to do. This is one of those Kleenex tissue holders. So that's great to do out of our fabrics. And then this, this, this so one cool. here, I don't know if y'all can see right there, handmade by Amy. When we were doing our retreat and Amy was our um, linker? Our linker, not <laughs> only our linker, but our moderator, yep. Amy, right before I started filming, she gave this to me and I was in tears. <laughs> I just so think cute. this is so cute. Look at that. And I'm guessing this is from her scraps, but who knows? But isn't that gorgeous? Look how pretty that is. And this is stuffed, it feels like, with rice. Mm -hmm. So, or maybe even sand. So anyway, pin cushions are great for all of your scraps, for all of these bundles. If you're buying this kit to make masks, you're gonna have scraps left over. Mm -hmm. I love making silly things like this because this is gonna be whatever for whoever, for one of the little kids that you have. You can see it's just <laughs> strips. This is t-shirt material here. And this one wasn't made by me. I bought this because I thought, how cool is that? She's just really random. I mean, just she the is. stitching, the rough <laughs> stitching, but out of your scraps, and it can be whatever it is. And if you wanted to do Halloween, Thanksgiving, whatever themed, that works too. All right, what are we looking for? I think that's I think, all of our big stuff. Yeah, so are you I, ready to bring out the others? I think we're ready to start getting into the sewing. So we'll you guys, out some frogs. we Real talked quick to, before we get started. Yes. Um, Somebody, I believe it was Miss Kaufman, said she has to choose between the frogs and the Christmas trees, which I don't see the Christmas trees. Do we have those? Um, I we, think all of them are on sale, correct? Um, yes, yes. So poor Jessica, you know, she has to plan out months in advance the these sales that we do. And then we come along and kind of throw her a curve with, you know, the frog is not a holiday. The, um, the big uh, bony pillows, those are not holidays. There's a lot of templates that we've used that are not holiday templates. So she's tried to put those things on sale as well. We didn't talk about the sale earlier in our on the air segment. And we just wanna make sure that you go to the sale tab on the website and you'll be able to see the items that are on the sale. When we do our holiday stuffies part two, you know we're gonna be doing this. Yeah. You know there are standard templates that are screaming Christmas, that are screaming holidays. So this we'll be could be done you. in fall colors or yeah. spring colors or 4th of July colors. The trees, absolutely, you could do them any fabric. But we thought we'd save those for our yeah. November show, which is going to be Holiday Stuffies Part 2. But I'm not sure, are these on sale too, Valerie? Did uh, she put these on the... She had, so I didn't yeah, look I think at she the did. So this of... is the small one. There's a bigger one, and it's about yay big. So yeah. it, this is, there's there are a set of two, I believe. But normally we it. don't put a brand new template on sale, but Jessica went ahead and did the frog one for you guys. So it is part of that sale, so... The frogs? <laughs> I didn't know that. Sale? I didn't know Wonderful. that. Great. So, Miss Kaufman, you can go ahead and get the tree and the frogs. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we'll have some other trees that will be showing you doing the holiday stuffies part two so don't just think about this when we've got other stuffies that we're doing as well so it's yes. gonna be a lot of fun we're gonna have Amy a bunch said more. if you put some warts on your frogs it'll look like halloween i don't know if i'd like that <laughs> well i guess we could figure look. out a I wart love that yeah some all right so here's just several that we've done and I, I needed to show this one because this one was done by uh margo and she is working on the pattern to to make this um 
I just love this. Catcher. The little th <laughs> the little thread catcher. I felt that that would probably be working better if you had it with the small frog, but here it is with the thread catcher. I just love how she pulled this little. She added this little tongue. Uh, she's got a little bee in here. But what I think would be you could actually put your extra sewing needles in oh, yeah. here. You could make this like a little pocket, put your little snippets in. But it's got this cute little thread catcher and she's working on the pattern for it. Uh, when you get this, it actually has the full written instructions that comes with how to make these frogs. And I go over several different ways that you could do it. But I just thought this was darling. I think she's even so going to put in there how you can find these little bees. That she, that she added to it. I, I, I'm going to set this in the sweet spot so Zeke yeah. can really good shot because he's just so cute with the tongue and everything that she did. She just really did a phenomenal job on making this for me. She was one of my testers for the, for the template. So this is what she had done with it. So absolutely fun, fun, fun. Now show how he hangs off the side of the table. So, so imagine, well, let's put it up front here. So they I don't can know see. if Zeke can get imagine, to that. Oh, yeah, because, maybe, well, oh yeah. Okay, so yeah. he would be hanging off yeah. the table sort of, sort of like that. So, that and I, I designed these frogs with a little bit extra longer legs so that if you didn't overstuff it, you would easily be able to make him be like a little shelf sitter. You know, he could be a paperweight, <laughs> whatever you wanted him to be. And what I liked about him is that, you know, you could do this where you would put your right sides together and sew it all the way around and you'd have no seam seen at all. But how fun is it to, you know, have it where you're actually putting wrong sides together, sewing all the way around and then just trimming it with some pinking shears or you can just kind of rag it up a little bit. So this is the two different sizes this one is our small one and this one is the large one these are just hot glued on here but if i was going to be giving this to somebody that had children then i would just take the time to sew it so this one here was just done with just a solid piece of fabric and i actually fused it onto some fusible fleece but you don't have to do that i just wanted it to have a little bit more uh, heft to it but this one's got some fusible fleece under here. You could put some batting underneath here and you could quilt it if you wanted it to be quilted. This one right here was where I had sewn a big patch of four patches together and then I quilted it with some batting underneath and then I cut it out from there. This one here is quilt as you go. So this is just uh, jelly roll strips or just strips of fabric that I just sewed together in a quilt as you go type pattern. So I got two different ways that to do this so I didn't know which one we were going to do today so here's the large template set you get two pieces you have one that goes on the fold and then you have one that you cut out too but you got to be sure to cut out mirror images so you just can't just set this down and then set this down on the right side of the fabric either have your fabric folded or you're going to cut one then flip your fabric over and cut the other because you've got to have a mirror image of the piece that has the curve then this one's on the fold. So you just got your cutting three things to, to make one of the frogs. And they go together real quick. Now, same thing for the smaller size. Now, here's the, here's the quilt as you go one. Literally just, just like how you do quilt as you go. There's lots of videos. Linda has done so many videos on quilt as you go. You see this little zigzag right here? I had two small pieces of batting and I just fused them together so I could reuse it. You don't throw away all of your bigger scraps so that way you can just fuse it, sew them together and reuse it. And this is just sewing strip after strip after strip after strip, quilt as you go all the way across. And this is plenty big enough where I would be able to cut out a couple of big frogs or a big one and a small one there. I've got plenty here to be able to cut out a couple of them. And then this is the fabric that I chose for the bottom of the frog. And then this one here is some of that fabric that we have in that fall bundle. And I just fused it to some fleece. I can go ahead and quilt this if I want or not. I don't have to. You can do whatever you want. And this is what I chose for the bottom. And again, this is a big enough piece where I would be able to cut out several of them. Now, some interesting things about this template. It does have your cut lines in here. So this is easy to be used with your rotary cutter here and here. I can easily cut all of this out with my rotary cutter. Have a little bit of difficulty right here at this little angle right here. Um, so the 28 millimeter will get into there. If you don't feel comfortable using a rotary cutter, you can actually mark that with a pencil or a pen and then just cut around it. 
but I designed it so it would be easy to be able to be used with our rotary cutters. So which one do you think we should do, Linda? Should we do the quilt as you go or should I do the fall plaid one? Okay, so if you guys want quilt as you go, give me thumbs up. <laughs> or do you want me to do the fall, the fall plaid? So I don't know which one. I'm going to pull out and I didn't know if should I do the large one? Should I do the small one? I only got one small one here. Oh, and to fill them? Okay, you can fill them with anything. You can fill them with polyfill. You can fill them with beads. You can fill them with the poly beads, rice, uh, beans. Um, however you want you to want. fill them is what you want to do. Plaid, plaid, plaid. Everybody, everybody wants a plaid? Well, so we had three plaids, two quilts as you goes. Greg said small. Do the small, so okay. plaid, small. Small plaid. So we're going to grab the small one. So that's on this one right here. And I have to cut out, and I'm going to do the top with the plaid. So I have to cut out two of these. And I'm going to use my 28 millimeter for this. So you got to um, pre cut your little cut groove right here. So before you even start, go ahead and take your rotary cutter and just kind of get your cut mark sort of restarted. And then you're going to cut out one where the, if, you, if you're using the multiple thickness of a fabric, I can't cut out two at a time with this thickness. Now, if I was doing it with a single fabric where I don't have any backing or batting on underneath it, then if I was just having my fabric folded, right, so I could get my mirror image, you've got to have a mirror image if I was going to cut out two like this. But this one, when I have it where it's thick like this and I can't double up the fabric, I got to cut out two, one, and then flip, a flip this over and then cut out a second one. So I'm just going to line them up right here. I mean, I could angle it in any way. It's going to give it a different look, however you put it on here. So let's get my blade up and open. I'm just going to cut around and get the first one cut out. So I kind of do it in like little steps when, I, when I'm cutting. So I just kind of go off and then I'm going into my cut line and then into the cut line here. You can see it just comes completely off. Follow this curve around. This is the important, you got to have that curve. And then I'm using my 28 and just kind of guiding it through. Coming up, catching his waist. All right, so here is number one, first one cut. Now I've got to flip this over to get my mirror image. Laura said that um, her husband had one that was a froggy car dashboard buddy. <laughs> Isn't that cute? This and is a design that's been around for a long time, um, but I just changed it a little bit because I wanted it to be used with our templates, with our rotary cutters. So I made it so it's easier to use this with our rotary cutters. Just changed it up just a little bit not taking anything from anybody just wanted to be able to design something that you could easily cut with our rotary cutter so you could quickly cut out a bunch of them verna said it's a great doorstop sitting up oh yeah that yes. was great all right so then we'll just go ahead just put that right there all those threads. So here's my two pieces. So now you're seeing, now I've got that mirror image of what I was needing it to be. So the first thing we're going to do is once I get, I'm going to cut out the last pieces, I'm going to line these edges up right here and you're going to sew a quarter of an inch right here. Now the body or the bottom of him, the belly, I guess to say, is I just take my fabric and you just fold it.
because it's got a straight edge. So this is going to sit on the fold right here. So let's go ahead and cut this piece off right here. And I just get my fold on here, make it nice crease. Put the little froggy on the fold and just cut around. Simple, right? Now you're going to need some pins. I think pins worked a little bit better than clips on this project. But you could use clips, but I did find that my pins were just a little bit easier. All right. And that's all the cutting that we're going to be doing. So you got your three pieces. Here is the bottom. Here's the two pieces for the top. So the next step is basically just sewing. So the first thing you're going to do, place these two pieces right sides together. And all I'm sewing is just this curve right here. And I do it at a quarter of an inch all the way across. And then I'm going to take some scissors and I'm going to clip that because it is a gradual curve. By doing this little sewing right here, this is what raises the back up just that little bit. Gives it that little bit of extra hump to it. So we're going to sew that. And then once we open it up, I'm going to not do this right sides together. I want my seams to be showing. So I'm just going to line up my edges right here, leave an opening, and then we'll just sew it all the way around. And that's the fun part because it's, you know, you're not, it's going to make it really cute to have this little frilly edge right here. Then we'll fill it with our silicone beads or whatever we want to fill it with. And then because the seam is seen, I'm able to pull all of that silicone or whatever I filled it with out of the way and put it back under my sewing machine and sew that opening closed just like that. And then it's, it's all done. And then you could glue your eyes on or you can, you could go ahead and after you could put your eyes on here first before you actually do the whole thing of sewing it together. But let's just go to sewing machine. Let's go start sewing. And again, if it's for a little baby, then go ahead and use felt. And you can yep. just do felt circles and, and sew those on. You know, white or cream circles and then a black for the center. And you don't have to stitch around. You can stitch down the middle or do an X on top of it as oh, well. Yeah. And Amy asked if it could be surged or is the machine better. You're hmm. Yeah, now you could surge this piece right here. Yeah. But, the but I don't edge, think you could be able to surge around the outside edge. Yeah, because then, then your edge much. is cut off. So when you cut with the pinking shears, that seam is cut. So here I'm just lining these two right sides together like this. Just sewing this right here. And i am just got some black thread in here. It's what I have in here because I was just sewing up a project. Still, I'm work, we'll be working on the uh, set the table. So I've been using some black thread for my set the table project. All right, now I'm just going to give it a back tack and just sew all the way on that curve. And it is a pretty gradual curve, but I still like to take the time to kind of clip it or just kind of put some little, you can notch it if you feel like you want to notch it. It's going to help it with that uh, lift out of that curve so it just sets a little bit better and you could use pinking scissors here mm -hmm. too yep you could pink this since you have if you have pinking scissors now a good time you can pull them out for this also so i just did all of that right there okay so the next thing is i just kind of push it out with my fingers you could hit it with the iron and push it out but I just kind of push it out with my fingers. Now, if you wanted to sew some iron, you know, sew buttons on, or if you wanted to go ahead and sew your little felt eyes on here, now would be the time that would be a good time to do it by placing them right here, knowing that you got a seam allowance that's going to be right here. But I'm sewing these wrong sides together, so the only thing left is just to line up 
the pieces to sew. So I just take my, I start with my hand, I get my most common points and I'm just kind of matching up the edges here and I'm grabbing my pins or you can use your clips and I'm just clipping, pinning it in place because I don't want it to shift. And I'm just going, first I start off with the most um, recognizable points. So like I've got this curve coming in here, so I'm matching up that one here. And I'll put more pins on after I get it all the way around. I'm just matching up points here. Now I know there's not a whole lot of definition here on the, um, on the feet, but you can add that definition with your sewing. If I could grab that one, you could see it a little bit more. Let me grab it so you can see what I did. The rotary cutter doesn't allow me to get into all these little curves and divots that much, but when I came with my sewing machine, then I, I came, it came out and went in and came out and went in. So I could show that it looked like he's got some webbed feet, webbed toes right here. Did it a little bit right here. So you could do whatever you want. You could add more of that definition into um, that detail that you might want to add. Is there any questions? No, not at this point. So everybody's just watching. I'm just I'm pinning it around. I'm posting links of some of the templates that we showed earlier that are on sale. We've got a really great sale right now. That um, comfort um, pillow, the post-surgery comfort pillow, it's almost $50 at the retail price, and we have it for $33.59. That's a good deal. That's just a really great one. If you're looking for a charity to make things for, that's a really good one, too. So... And I see lots of you that are tagging your friends. That's what's going to be one of the ways to enter into the giveaway for next week. So, or for the next um, Creating with Martelli that we're doing. So we really appreciate you all posting and tagging your friends. That's good. You see, I'm just, I'm just pinning, matching up edge to edge. Because it's really easy to find yourself sewing along and then you didn't catch the bottom part so you just pulling it out and matching it up And by the way, if anybody does want to do a sew along with us or wants to kind of get a head start, the templates that we have on sale, I'm looking at the first page and we're going to be showing the elephant in the next um, ho holiday stuffies. We're, that's on page one. We're going to be showing the stars. We have the twin star template set. Um, we're going to be showing the easy peasy trees. We're going to be showing the another star template set. The spruce trees we're going to show. Uh, we're going to be doing some, um, we're doing the pumpkin template today, uh, but we're going to be doing the paw stump, uh, stocking just a little bit because I want to do one of the Creating with Martelli's just on stockings. So if you don't have our stockings yet, I'm going to show you some really cool ideas for the paw stocking, for the elf stocking, and for the Christmas stocking. So the bottom of page two and the top of page three, um, all those stockings will be showing. Lisa, are we going to show the shark stocking and the base, uh, the bass stocking and the mermaid stocking during well, the stocking which session? One, which uh, one? Would, would, are we doing stockings? <laughs> we don't have it on the calendar yet, but we are. Well, so. well, we we could. I hadn't thought about doing a stocking. I mean, we've done videos on most of these stockings. I know we need to do the hat. With the yeah. um, Santa hat. Don't yeah. we have a Santa hat one out there? So let's see. Um, Amy said heat up stuffing in the kitty. Yes. 
Amy, for the kitty, you can use uh, my favorite material, and it's a weird one, is deer corn. Uh, you get that at one of the. Um, She'll feed know what stores. that is. Look where she lives. So, yeah. <laughs> the deer corn, I used to make all of the different, um, you know, wraps to put around your neck and your knee and your shoulder and all of that stuff. And they get really, really heavy to ship. So, but deer corn to me has a unique smell and it heats up well and it just has a different feel to it so you can use rice you can use any kind of beans dollar tree has those bags of beans that you can get crushed walnut is a lot of fun of course you can use combinations with lilac and different kinds of scents in there too which be, would be really nice but there's a lot of different things you can put in the kitty and what you want to think about is in the microwave versus in the freezer uh, because they handle differently all right, Lisa, sorry for taking over. Oh, that's all right. So what I'm doing right now, I've got a bunch of pins in here, and I take my time going around because sometimes it likes to shift a little bit. But I'm looking at where I want to do my filling. I have found for me the best place to leave opening is about right here, sort of bit like between. It's not where it curves in right here, but about right here, somewhere in the leg, uh, the lower leg and midway of the body. So I'm going to kind of put this purple one aside, slide this pin back a little bit because I'm probably going to do my filling spot is going to be right here. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to leave this piece open right here. I guess that would be the his knee <laughs> somewhere right here. And we're going to just start sewing all the way around, taking our time because knowing that it shifts just a little bit on this, you got to want to make sure that you're catching everything very well. It's pulled up a little bit. All right, so we're going to start sewing. And I am sewing about, probably about a fat quarter of an inch all the way around. Not a, not a skinny fat, not, not a scant quarter, but I'm actually a little bit more. Just because we're going to trim it with the uh, pinking shears next. I'm going to go do a really good back tack right here. Kind of creating my own little web toes. Making sure I am still all the layers right there where I can see it. When I come up to this first little juncture right here, I don't pivot it. I try to do a full curve as I go around it. So I don't put so much stress on that seam right here. Amy says she made her husband a flannel lined head wrap. He wore it while camping. What a great idea. A what? Yeah. She very made a what? Cool. A flannel um, lined head wrap. Oh, that sounds good. Okay. Now I'm coming on my first little arm. 
So Anita wanted to know, is there some type of lining or batting in the frog? Yes, I used the um, fusible fleece. I just ironed on some fusible fleece right here. You don't have to, but I just did some fusible fleece. You could do batting and quilt it if you wanted. If you do the quilt as you go method, no, you know, then whatever that base is that you're quilting on would be that. And I like using something a little bit thicker just because when you go to stuff it, you don't get all the lumpiness, um, you know, that sometimes you do when you're stuffing something. So having a layer on the top and on the bottom if you want to. And Eileen asked, are the seams a quarter inch or half of an inch? I'm sewing a quarter inch. Except, didn't you do a half I'm, an I'm, inch? I did a quarter inch for when I sewed the two top pieces together, and I'm doing a fat quarter. Not a, not a skinny quarter, but a fat quarter going all the way around, because I'm going to trim it up. But it's quarter, you know, it's the same, quarter inch. Yeah, because along the edges, we need to give enough room to yeah, pink. For the pinking shears because I'm using the pinking shear method. Now, if I was just sewing top to bottom and or putting the right sides together and sewing all the way around, and I was gonna be flipping it out, then I would just do a quarter of an inch. But because I'm pinking shearing this, I wanted it to have plenty on here so I could you know, trim it up with the pinking shears. So I've got this, not a quarter, it's just a fat quarter, not a scant quarter. Opposite. And Lisa, you did the fusible fleece just on the top, not just on the back? Just on the top. Okay. Just on the top. And you don't even have to do that. I just feel like it gives it a little bit more of a, a softness or a body to it by having that fusible fleece right here or batting on here. But I've actually made these without having anything at all, just pieces of fabric with no uh, batting or backing. And again, I think it depends on the stuffing you're putting in there. If you're putting in something that's lumpy bumpy, you know, then having that fusible fleece or batting yeah, that makes you it quilted looks, makes it look nicer. Yeah, it's just a little bit softer. I, I mean, we made these when I was a brownie, and then I did these with my brownies when I was a brownie leader, and we only did two pieces of fabric, and we sewed them by hand. So you can do whatever. And we used beans um, to stuff them and then we threw them. They were a bean, bean bag toss game that we did. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different ways you can use these frogs. Curtis thinks I should make them for, make, have a, for you know, there's cornhole. So yes. he's thinking we could do this with the cornhole, use frogs instead. <laughs> I know. That's what I suppose. Frog bog. Uh-huh. Coming up on to where I, my purple pin, where I'm gonna be stopping. And do it a good backpack here. All right, so that's that's him. And so I like to go and check the back side, make sure I caught it at least a quarter of an inch all the way around because it has a tendency to shift just a little bit. And if I feel that I need to come in a little bit more, I'll bring it in, but I think this all looks pretty good. So before I even go to fill it, I go ahead and get my pinking shears out and I start trimming. I think I got some right here. I found it was easier to trim him first before I filled it. So I just, just kind of go along the outside edges. And back and forth, however it's easiest for you to do your trimming with. Because then I like to rough it up to kind of give him more of that uh, edgy, loosen up those strings just a little bit. And there are pinking shears that give a different pinked edge. Yeah, I actually um, have another set that's here. This one here has smaller teeth to it, so it's a totally different look. You see that? 
got different. And it does make a difference. She's got different teeth on this one. This one's got bigger teeth. This one's got smaller teeth. And I filmed a video this weekend and I was talking about how if you've got pinking shears that are really, really tough to cut, they make pinking shears that are not tough to cut. So I just grew up thinking pinking shears were always hard and stiff, but they don't have to be. So if you can afford to splurge a little bit and try out different pinking shears so you can find a pair that feels good in your hands, because I've been using pinking shears on almost all of my projects lately. And I just flip it back and forth to get to different areas. So it's just easier to manage. What's everybody think? Are you liking this? Deciding you're going to be making frogs? <laughs> Easy to. Who's got the frogs on their um, to buy list? They're just so easy to do. It's just a cute project. I made one for my dad, and he just, this was when I was still in the prototype stage, and he just loved it. I did it in Ohio State fabrics. <laughs> so he's a little Ohio State frog. That's a great idea. <laughs> and, you know, we, we do the teddy bears out of your loved one's clothes. The frog would be really cute, too. So if you have grandpa that is no longer around, but you've got his blue jeans, it would be really cute to do out of his blue jeans oh, or that flannel shirt, you know, and put a little note. You all have seen that really cute note that talks about, uh, you know, it's, you all know what, which one I mean, I'm sure. Uh, but you could put that note on the bottom of the frog too. I think that would be really cute. Now, Amy says, can pinking shears be sharpened like regular shears? I don't I do know. I do not know. I have no idea. That's a great question. All right. So I'm um, going to show you this. I cut into my seam right here. So how do we fix that? I'm just going to lay it back on here and I'm just going to go deeper with my, um, with my stitch right here. All right, we've got lots of great comments here. So um, Peggy has frogs on her wish list. Laura <laughs> says, go Buckeyes. Bo Bonnie says, maybe Martelli could make a pinking shear blade for the rotary cutter. I asked for that years ago and I was told no. So I don't know if that'll be possible or not. Laura says, Valerie needs to find spring-loaded pinking shears. Um, and let's see. Um, and then we had a, can I put in a request? I think that was from Norma, but I'm not sure what that's in reference to. So what's the, can I put in a request with the laughing tears? <laughs> I'm not sure about know. that. Peggy has frogs on her wish list. All right, so I'm gonna show you. Um, so that all I have left is just to fill it and then to sew it closed. So we're gonna go get my filling and we're gonna fill it. So here's my little opening. I haven't pinked it yet. There's my little opening right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill this up right here. And then, then I'll slide all this out. Then I'll go back in here and I'll sew this and then I'll pink that closed. So how are we doing on time? 3.03. All right. So I got this huge, huge box of beads here. This is like a 25 pound or 50 pound box that I got. I got me a little funnel. And all I do is I just get to my little opening right here and I just put my funnel in here. And I just fill. I start with filling down to this leg and down to this leg and down to this leg. I don't overfill it because I want him to be able to sit. Now, if I overfill them, then I can't, I can't get him to sit. And you notice she's using the pellets. This morning when I was stuffing one of my stuffies, I used some kind of beans, and they were too big to go through the funnel. So I used a junky pair of scissors, and I cut the bottom of the funnel opening off so that the beans could fall down in the bottom. Does that make sense to everybody? Give me a thumbs up if that makes sense. So I got the front leg filled, so now I'm kind of maneuvering it, and now I'm going to try to get start getting some of the beads going down on here to the other leg. Yeah. 
Valerie came up earlier and I was filling one and looked at her, turned this the wrong way and had beads flying everywhere. <laughs> so I'm just kind of maneuvering it, kind of getting the beads down to another leg, getting the arms filled. Peggy asked about part two next week. No, Peggy, we actually came up with part two after we made the calendar. So part two is gonna be November 2nd. Next week, we are doing the grab and go grommet bag. Then we are doing G's necessary clutch wallet. And then the following week, we're doing set the table. So you've got a, almost a month until part two. And we also wanted it to put, put it closer to uh, Christmas and that kind of thing. Uh, Verna also said split peas would work nice. I oh, think, yeah. Yeah, I think I was doing split peas early. I'm not a vegetable bean person, so I have a bunch of beans that I have around the house that I don't cook with. <laughs> and Amy says she was thinking how brave. She'd be filling it over the box. Ha ha. <laughs> I was doing that. I think I about got it as full as I want, but let me check. So got a good bit in here, got a bit here. Got some down here. I think I want a little bit more in here and then we're gonna go so close it, so I'm closed. Look how cute he's coming together. Yep, he's getting there. And he doesn't have any eyes and he doesn't really need eyes. You know, that's the cool thing about something like this is you don't really need any definition of um, eyes or a nose or a mouth or a tongue or anything like that. So these can whip up really fast. Assembly line projects. Whoop, there we go, some. <laughs> getting some beads. You can't do this without getting some somewhere, right? Yep. Getting to the last bit that I wanted to get in there. We got lots of thumbs up. I'm assuming that that means they like him. So more personality. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. I mean, you can add all kinds of things. I mean, I think the quilt as you go, you know, imagine finding fabric, Sel the salvage, salvage, salvage fabrics would be really cute from this too. If anybody saves your salvages from your fabrics, you know, that would be a really cute salvage frog. Okay, so I got as much in there as I'm gonna put in. So what I'm doing now is I am just moving all of those beads away because I'm going to stick it right back underneath the sew machine and I'm going to stitch them closed right here. So I've, you do not want those needles <laughs> hitting those beads. Ask me why. <laughs> they don't go through them. Oh, goodness. Now, this would be a good place if you weren't comfortable with this pin, pin, pin along that beaded area so that you don't have to worry about any of those beads. No beads through. underneath here. Lisa's just brave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Karen says she's going to get the frog. Yeah, he's adorable. <laughs> Back tacking and then just sewing it closed. If you all are looking Last for things to give to, to policemen to keep in the backs of their um, their trunks, so when they go to a domestic violence scenario or something where they, they've got kids around, these would be a lot of fun to stitch up a whole bunch and, um, and donate these, I think would be really, really There he cute. is. <laughs> and Anne says, is the elephant easy like the frog? Yeah. Yes, he's easy. <laughs> yeah. So I like to make my edges a little rougher. So I just kind of rub the edges together just to kind of get, get kind of more of that frazzled look on my edges. So that's, that's, all, that's all I'm doing. You could have added like a little felt uh, tongue to him. Like you could have had it hanging out. A little red felt tongue would have been really cute. I'm just roughing up my edges just a little bit, just so he's a little bit more fuzzy. And that that's him. That's that's the that's that's the boy. That's him right there. 
All right, so I was at the moderating place in place of Valerie, and now I'm popping back in because we're wrapping up. Yay! So I I know you guys love this because I saw great comments there. So I really, really hope y'all are so getting cute. these frogs and you're going to stitch them up. I mean, look how adorable. So we got lots <laughs> of loves on these so guys. Little, so what, 20 minutes, I think? It so, took us about 20, yes, 25 minutes to make them. Super fast yep. and easy. Yep. Now, we're not going to do the elephant in the stuffy because we've got a video. There, we do have a full video. So we have it. a video on the elephant, and he whips up really fast, too. And mm -hmm. there's personality you can add to the elephant as well. So have we have the small ele I mean, the small frog template. We have the large frog template. They're both available. They're both on sale, which Valerie doesn't normally do. So that's a mm -hmm. big deal. So we to get this full bundle oh my God. and make these. How yeah. easy is that? I, I, mean, I was at, I almost pulled out this fabric because I thought, oh, a, a, a sunflower frog, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, look how cute he would be sitting on Purple your dining room table dots. for dinner. You know, a frog. Isn't that mm -hmm. adorable? I want to do this. I mean, I love I love these two fabrics. Look, I mean mm -hmm. that polka dot. I mean, that's a fabric I would add in almost everything. If you're going for a more masculine look, you know, this, I love, 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 love this. Mm -hmm. That frog would be so adorable with that. So you've got so many options with this bundle. We are shocked that that's this bundle right is here. still available. Yeah, yeah. So, these two right here is what yeah, I just I used. mean, you can play with this and have so much fun with it. All the projects that we showed today are pretty quick and easy. Mm -hmm. I don't think we had anything that we did that was difficult. No. So no. I'm trying to go through. I, you know, the goal is holiday stuffy, stuff, stuff, stuff. The stuffing is the part that takes the longest time, mm -hmm. I think. The whipping up is really fast. Mm -hmm. So we hope we've given you some great ideas. We have a giveaway that we need to do. Let and me go get it. You're going to grab it. I'll grab the product. You, grab you have the, the name, name, right? Right Are here. We will be mailing this out this afternoon to, I'm going to put in the sweet spot, Judith A. Thorpe. Congratulations. Yay! Thank you, Judy, for liking, comment, and sharing. We appreciate it. Lots of you guys tagged friends today. So we're going to be taking those names. If you'd like to comment and share this video, and you don't have to do it today. If you're watching the replay, okay. It's the next time that we do another one of the Creating with Martellis that we will pull one name from somebody that has liked, comment, shared, or tagged friends, and we'll have another giveaway. So yeah. you want to wrap it up? Did y'all like that? Wasn't well, that cute. fun? That so what are we making next time? So, okay, know. so <laughs> Set the Table is our next set one. Set the Table is the next one. We, we've got a bunch of stuff to show you with Set the Table. Yes, set we the do. Table, it's still going to be a little bit of Halloween fall. We're going to be moving into Thanksgiving, and we have some Christmas stuff, and we mm -hmm. even have some New Year's stuff for that, yes, too. Yes, we do. So we have one Set the Table. After that, again, we've got the next Holiday Stuffies. That's part two. I want to do a Christmas Quickies Gifts. So we're trying to put that on the calendar. I yep. also want to do stockings. You this guys is killing let, me. I know. <laughs> well, and Zeke too, because he has to film. So <laughs> you guys have to let us know, because we're you know limited on time right now, really. What are your priorities? What would you like us to show? We have videos on making the stockings. We have videos on making the Santa hats. We have videos on the elephant. Yeah. So not videos, but a video. So go watch those videos. Our Martelli uh, Facebook, our Martelli YouTube channel has a ton of videos. You'll see a whole lot of Lisa creating. So go watch that as well. Yeah. And we hope this has been. Hope, hope you um, enjoyed it. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed joyful. today. We enjoyed getting this all together. It's a lot of work, but we enjoy doing this. Hope you had fun. Again, if you have any comments, any questions, any suggestions, always reach out to us at learn at martellinotions.com and we will be sure to get back with you as soon as possible. Thanks guys, <laughs> we appreciate you being here. Thank you, bye-bye.